I'd like to call to order the April 14th meeting of the Shelby Township Planning Commission. Madam Secretary, would you call the roll, please? Yes, Mr. Dallo? Here. Ms. Tosico? Here. Ms. Casali? Here. Mr. Bernardi? Here. Mr. wex -Monsky. Here. Mr. Apone? Here. Mr. Veyer? Here. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Very good. Uh, first uh, is, if there are no uh, comments or corrections, uh, approval of the agenda, I will entertain a motion. So move. Support. Moved and supported. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, next, approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of March 24th, 2014. Uh, if there are no corrections to the minutes, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, next, we have correspondence. Uh, the planning department received a letter from Michigan New Homes Realty regarding a question on permitted use, uses in a uh, C5 zoning district. Uh, Mr. Wynn, would you uh, yep. tee that up for us? Mr. Chairman, the, um, the gentleman wasn't able to make the meeting tonight, but I think I can explain what he's asking for. It's more of an interpretation than anything else. Um, he raised the question whether or not we would allow a church as a permitted use in the C5 district. And the C5 district in this parcel is located at Market Street and Lakeside Boulevard, right in back of Costco. Um, churches are not specifically listed in the list of permitted uses. However, it does include theaters, auditoriums, concert halls, and other similar places of assembly. So it would have been my conclusion that it would be reasonable to ex understand or kind of accept a proposition that a church could be allowed as a permitted use in that district. And as Bob Kirk and I talked today, there's some there's some federal statutes that uh, basically allow churches almost in any zoning district. So I think um, it'd be my interpretation that we would allow that. Subject, of course, I'm submitting a site plan coming in. It's a, it's a planned unit development process. So it would go to the Planning Commission and the board. So. Um, okay, so it would be permissible as a, a planned unit development? Yes, as a planned unit development. Which and anything in that district now is considered a planned right. unit development. Right. So. Okay, any questions for the planner? Dale. Chairman. Sure. When, how would that reflect on on uh, existing businesses that reflect with the church use in their that district being a heavily commercial district? That's a good question, and it may be that this site isn't well suited to a church. But the the, the only thing I'm suggesting is he could come in and make application. You know, we would then evaluate as part of that application whether this was an appropriate use at that location, and given what we're trying to achieve in C5, it may or may not be. But I didn't want him to come in and make applications, spend the time and effort to submit a plan <coughs> and find out that procedurally we couldn't even allow it. So it's really more of a procedural question that we're answering, asking tonight. The more substantive question, Dell, that you, Mr. Dell, that you raise would be more properly dealt with when they submit an application. But I think you've raised a very good point. Which, uh, yeah, I, I will understand that, but we also we need to see if the church might have might reflect on the existing businesses and upcoming businesses. Correct. Because some of the licenses that uh, they have to be certain distances from the church, and be in that special district right there. Everybody's commercial bars, restaurants, everybody. It else. may not be a good location for it. That's another good point. Right, um, which are which are concerns that if if the applicant or potential applicant would want to bring, I'll point that out to them. They should, I'll yeah. point that out and I call them back tomorrow. So they may have they may have some bars and restaurants that are within a thousand feet or whatever that distance. Which will be consideration when if they do make an application right. for that type of use right. here for, for this. Mr. Body. Chairman, yeah, the, before they apply, probably we need to address their issue to a point that uh, they will not object to any coming businesses in the future being a church facility. Well, and, you know, and they actually put, put, put the cart on the other side of the horse. I mean, you know, would we want to, you know, create uh, a barrier to other businesses coming in? By yeah, putting, that's a uh, really good that question, that Mr. Dell. So, yeah. And again, it's part of that special land use process. We're evaluating its relationship to other uses. And it may be that this isn't the right location for one. I just didn't want him to get them to get so far along the line and find out that, well, they should have come in and asked the question first. So, thank you. Any other questions? I do have a question. Uh, this is to Mr. Wynn. If, if the applicant did uh, find it suitable for them and they um, 
submitted a special use application, then what is the process after that? Are the neighbors notified? Yes. And it, then it's a, yep. a public hearing? Or, or There's two steps. The first step would they come in and just show us a schematic preliminary plan, and we'd have to make a determination if we felt this use had merit. If we did, then we'd have them go ahead and do this final application. That's when we do the notices. Okay. But, you know, if they want to do a kind of a preliminary plan and come in, we could accept a preliminary application. I don't know how serious they are. Okay. Right. And at that time, some of the questions and the late questions that Mr. Dallow raised would, would be appropriate. And if they want to come back even in more informally, we can let them do that if they have something at some point. But I don't, I don't, again, I don't know how serious that is. It's the first time I've ever heard anybody interested in a church at that location. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Uh, Commissioner Wixmanski. Is there a tax loss, tax revenue loss, because it would be a church there? Potentially. Pardon? Potentially. It's tax exempt property, yeah. Depends on the use, but most of it would be. <clears throat> okay, any other questions? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Oh. Just to receive and file it. Oh, we just receive and file yeah. it. Okay. And I'll just pass on this conf information I have okay. from. Um, move to receive and file by Dalu. Support. Support by Casali. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, uh, next item, uh, site plan uh, number 13-13, Waddle Square Incorporated, Barclay <coughs> Lake Village. Uh, if the petitioner's here, if you come up, uh, state your name, address for the record. Um, and ask, explain a little bit of what you're proposing, please. Thank you. I'm Pete Snyder from Urban Land Consultants, 8800 23 Mile Road, uh, here in Shelby Township. This, uh, we're here, I'm here tonight with Steve Orr representing uh, the applicant as well. This uh, project is, is Barkley Lake Village number two. It's an extension of uh, the original Barkley Lake. Uh, which is the original site plan that was approved back in the early 90s is the lower of the two boards with the area in question there highlighted in orange. It's about five and a half acres uh, proposed for 13 uh, site condo units. And it's, uh, it was shown as future development area. Do you want me to lift it up so we can see it? I think yeah, it's relevant, yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking for the camera guys, although they don't look like they're working too hard in there. <laughs> All right. Or you could put it on top, I'm thinking, you know, Kelly G, yep. yeah, stack it up. You thought I looked bad before, wait till those guys get a hold of me. <laughs> as long as we don't get a gust of wind, I'm good to go here. Um, but again, it's the area highlighted in orange. It's Again, it's about five and a half acres proposed for 13 site condo units. It was shown as a uh, future potential development area on the original Barkley Lake. There, they have it on the overhead now. Um, it, the original Barkley Lake was developed as an open space reduction plan, meaning at the time, the zoning standards allowed for a 70-foot lot. And uh, in exchange for the open space generated by the lake and, and the open area, the, the lots were reduced to 63 foot wide frontage. Um, one of the things that's affecting moving forward with the development is that the, that the zoning standards uh, for R1C have changed from a 70 foot minimum frontage to an 80 foot minimum frontage. Um, so part of why we're here is to sort of sort out exactly how to move forward with an approval process for this, whether we do it via variances or whether we do, whether we do it as a PUD, sort of sticking to the original open space 10% um, uh, reduction criteria. So that may be part of the discussion tonight. Um, and um, there isn't a whole lot more to say about this site. We've submitted for departmental review comments, received those, made all the changes uh, with respect to that. The um, one thing about the road, there was some discussion from the road commission that they wanted the road to be dedicated public. And speaking with the applicant, um, they really are pretty clear they'd like to keep it private if they can. I don't think there's a requirement that they have to make it public, but it avoids a layer of sort of extra red tape that they would like to avoid. And they so their preference is to keep it private. So. You know, with that, I, again, I don't think it's the kind of site that needs a lot of explanation, so I'm available for any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Wynn, would you want to give us a little history sure. on and uh, maybe your thoughts? 
Well, this is the substantive issue with this is how do we reconcile the lot size requirements? And Mr. Snyder's right, in 1997, we increased all the residential lot sizes and frontage, frontages, and now this site doesn't meet those. And so we figured out, we talked about what are the options available to them. One would have been lot averaging. The ordinance allows lot averaging. Some lots could be bigger, some lots could be smaller. They don't meet that requirement, the 10%. The other option would be send this all to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And uh, Mr. Moff and I were talking about this earlier today. That may be more than what normally would go to the Board of Appeals. So the third option, we consider this as a planned unit development, which allows us the flexibility of offering some adjustments in lot area, a cul-de-sac link, some of the areas we have to reconcile. It also requires a public hearing, which I think we should have for something like this, because there's an existing development there. There's people who live around. I think they, we have an obligation to kind of bring it to their attention to have them opportunity to come in. Um, I think the planned unit development is the best option, and, and we would not miss a step for today. All we would really have to do today, if you wanted to accept it as that, would be to make a determination this plan has merit on its surface and that we would ask for um, some of the details, the questions that we raised in our review letter from the departments to be reconciled and have them come back at a public hearing. I think it's a nice mechanism. I mean, these lots are much bigger than the ones that are there now, but they still don't meet our standard. But I, I, I think introducing some additional single family homes in this neighborhood is a very good program for the neighborhood. And, and I, think, uh, I think it's a, good, a very good project. Okay. A uh, question to the petitioner: Would 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 your client be willing to proceed as a PU, as a planning unit development? Yes, really. Whatever it would be the most straightforward way to proceed. Again, I don't think there's strong feelings either way about that. And uh, you know, again, we're certainly not against a PUD at all. Okay. So. Okay. That we were the idea behind tonight's meeting was to introduce it to everybody to show them this is the new project and kind of sort through what the best procedural mechanism was because frankly Pete and I have struggled with this along with Dick for some time thinking how do we get from here to there because what happened in the original Barclay Lake no longer applies because the ordinance changed. Right. I don't want to overscure overlook the fact this is a really decent project. It's a logical extension. Yep. Agreed. Uh, any questions from the board for the petitioner or the planner? M Mr. Wun, when we're talking about the 10% uh, reduction, uh, on which are at the whole area or the frontage or which, uh, none of them qualify for the 10 No, the, they, they, it doesn't meet the 10% the, the reduction doesn't work on this site. So when we were working the approval, we're talking about beyond the 10%. Yes, okay. yeah. Thank you. So the, the planned your development process gives us flexibility to modify standards where you think there's some merit in doing so. Any other questions? And if, if you concur with that, you would be making a motion to accept this as a preliminary planned unit development sending it on the board because you feel it has some merit. That's simply all you have to do. And if, it's, if it's even relevant, again, even though we're changing, stretching the standards, it's the same 13 units that was originally conceptually approved with the original Barca Lake. It's not like we're trying to get two more two more lots out of it at all. It's the same. It was 13 then. It's 13 now. It's just we're ready to move forward, and now we can't move forward like sure. we expected. You know, and, but I think having the having the public uh, yep. as, comment aspect of it um, and allow folks to see what kind of screening is going to be done on the north end of the property, sure. making sure that the engineering and allowing us to flush out a little bit on the why the uh, road commissioner, Department of Roads, you know, uh, made that suggestion. It would give us some time between now and the public hearing to whittle down that list and make sure we have them resolved. And yeah. all things considered, it's still one more meeting, you know, either the ZBA or, or this right. fine body I, here. I counted it up, PUD versus the other way, and I got four meetings either way, so. <laughs> 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 I did do my math, straightforward as it may seem. <laughs> yeah, and for the consultant, he's snapping his fingers, he was hoping one dog. The other aspect of this is a couple of years ago when the state law changed, it requires us now to have a public hearing whenever we have a subdivision. Well, technically this isn't a subdivision, it's site condo, but for all practical purposes, they're the same. We treat them the same. I'd hate to not invite the public because it's a technicality. That would be, that just wouldn't be the right way to do it. Yeah. They, 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 people need to know about this project and have a proper opportunity to comment. Good. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Oh, okay. 
uh, I had a little question, but you can help me finish if uh, uh, my motion. <laughs> um, I propose we accept to we accept the site plan 13. Uh, Dash 13 Waddle Square as a preliminary PUD uh, with a site plan to. With the, with the final site plan to be submitted at a later date? Yes, with the and, final site right. plan to be submitted. And to at make a later another date. comment, do you find the plan has merit to meet the requirements of the ordinance? Yes, well said. That's <laughs> the normal way we've done it. I just. Kathy's got it. I support. Got it. Support. <laughs> Moving supported. Uh, any questions on the motion? Kathy, you don't count? No, I don't. Um, I'll call the roll. Uh, Commissioner Casale? Yes. Commissioner Moore? Yes. Commissioner Dalu? Yes. Commissioner DeSico? Yes. Commissioner Bernardi? Yes. Commissioner Wexmanski? Yes. Commissioner Pohn? Yes. Commissioner Vire? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Good Thank luck. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing the final plan. Uh, next item, planning director's report. Uh, last month, we had 16 sign applications and four temporary use permits. That's it. Uh, next to last item is business from the floor. Does anyone wish to address the body? Not, not, from, not from this body. I think you might want to contact our Department of Public Works. Planning Commission is not involved with that at all. I can give you a phone number after the meeting if you like. I'll talk to you after the meeting. Okay. All right, now the last item. Commissioner Dallow? Adjourn. Move to adjourn. Is it supported Four. and supported? Four. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Tomorrow. Yeah. That's a nice looking development. What?